What's up guys, JV2017 here, and this is my full and complete explanation of the complex, emotional, revolutionary, gut-wrenching, and incredible ending of Bioshock Infinite. By the end of this video, I hope I will have answered any and all questions you have about the ending to this game. And if I don't, always feel free to leave a question in the comments below because someone else will try to answer it, and of course, I will try my best to answer it as well. So without further ado, kick back, grab some popcorn, and let's get started. I believe the best way for me to explain the ending is to walk through the end, step by step, and jump back to several points in the game to support my ideas. I'm going to start from where I think the beginning of the end happens, when Booker and Elizabeth finally catch up to Comstock on his Hand of the Prophet airship. In typical fashion, Comstock has this beautiful scene of biblical proportions set up in an attempt to brainwash Elizabeth, just like he's brainwashed the rest of Columbia. Seed of the prophet shall sit the throne and drown in flame the mountains of man. In addition to the archangel giving him Elizabeth's prophecy to succeed Comstock, it also told him that he should protect Elizabeth from the false shepherd, Booker DeWitt. This false shepherd would keep her from fulfilling her prophecy, so Comstock had to stop him at all costs. I did all of that to keep you from her, when all I needed was to tell her the truth. What truth? We don't know at this point. Then he does something that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Ask him, child. Ask him what happened to your finger. Ask DeWitt! The finger? Really? Why? It's pretty obviously pointed out to the player in the first scene, Elizabeth has this strange thimble on her finger. But big whoop de doo She actually does mention it earlier in the game, when Booker and Elizabeth go through multiple tears to get the guns for the Vox Populi from Chen Lin, the Chinese gunsmith. You wanna ask me, ask me. About what? My finger. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't- It's alright. It's as much a mystery to me as anyone else. Maybe Songbird knows, but he's not talking. I'm, I'm sorry. What for? I get to wear this stylish thimble to cover up my hideous deformity. I hear they're all the rage in Paris. What actually seemed like non-important small talk turns out to be a huge difference in the end. However, we're not quite to that part yet, so just keep that in mind as we continue on. So when Comstock goes crazy over the finger, Booker reacts immediately and starts strangling him and accusing him of what the player believes to be the truth, that Comstock is to blame for all of Elizabeth's troubles in her life, which he actually is. Comstock's final words are strange, too. Tell me! It is finished. What is finished? We don't know. Yet. Elizabeth then remarks about the finger. Out of all of that, Booker murdering her father, she points out the finger. The finger has been pretty inconsequential up to this point, but everyone seems to be making a huge deal out of it now. Booker knows nothing about the finger, but Elizabeth isn't convinced. About it. You too. You just can't remember it. No. This doesn't make much sense, since Booker just met Elizabeth on his quest to pay off his debt. Booker decides to destroy the siphon, where Elizabeth spent her whole life being drained of her tear powers, to prove that he knows nothing about her finger. The epic battle ensues, and Booker finally sends Songbird to destroy Monument Island, the Siphon. This is where everything gets... trippy. Songbird goes out of control and swoops back to attack Booker when Elizabeth stops him in his tracks by opening a tear. With the Siphon being destroyed, Elizabeth is in full control of her powers. Periodically in the game, she would mention that she used to be able to control these powers when she was younger, and was even able to create and open new tears. The siphon drained her of her powers, so with that out of the way, her power is unchained. This tear that she opens effectively kills Songbird, and then you start to realize where you are. What is this place? Elizabeth? Rapture. When I first realized our location, my jaw dropped. We're in one of the first areas we encounter in the original Bioshock. 
but why? Elizabeth describes it as a doorway, but really doesn't explain much else. Ascending to the top, Elizabeth opens the original lighthouse door to reveal more lighthouses. See? Not stars. They're doors. Doors to? To everywhere. All that's left is the choosing. all these lighthouses why are we who are there are a million million worlds all different and all similar constants and variables what there's always a lighthouse there's always a man there's always a city how do you know this i can see them through the doors you a songbird but sometimes something's different the same. Constants and variables. Yes. So that was a lot to take in. In order to understand the whole million worlds concept, you have to understand the multiverse theory, a theme that has been present throughout the game. Via a quick Wikipedia definition, a multiverse is a hypothetical set of multiple possible universes that together comprise everything that exists and can exist the entirety of space, time, matter, and energy, as well as the physical laws and constants that describe them. Heavy stuff, I know. In layman's terms, there are multiple parallel universes that exist. Elizabeth has the power to traverse these universes by opening tears. She explains that there are constants and variables, which play a huge role in understanding the very ending. In the multiple universes that are present in Bioshock Infinite, there are absolute constants and variables. She explains that there's always a lighthouse, always a man, always a city. Now you see the dots are connecting. That very line reveals the tie-in with the original Bioshock, which seemed to be up in the air up to this point. Think about it. In one universe, we have Andrew Ryan, this maniacal ruler who so happened to have an illegitimate son with superpowers that came back to his city and was misguided by a power-hungry Fontaine. Within the story, the conflict of Dr. Tenenbaum, a genius working for Ryan, arises with the Little Sisters. They are innocent, but valuable assets to Tenenbaum, and are protected by hulking mechanical big daddies. But in this alternate but parallel universe, the story is very, very similar. Zachary Comstock is the maniacal ruler of Infinite. Daisy Fitzroy is the heretical rebel that entices Booker to fight for the Vox Populi against Comstock. And interwoven into the story, the centerpiece of the conflict lies Elizabeth. Her powers are invaluable, a huge asset to Comstock, and she is protected by the mechanical songbird. The Lutesses are the geniuses who've masterminded the floating city of Columbia with quantum physics. They also happen to work for Comstock, but were killed because they became a threat to his goals. But where and how is Booker related to Comstock? Why is Elizabeth so valuable to the Lutesses? These are the few missing pieces at this point. Elizabeth leads Booker to another door, one that Booker actually recognizes this time. It's where he was 20 years ago, right after his participation at the Battle of Wounded Knee. Are you ready to have your past erased? Are you ready to have your sins cleansed? Are you ready to be born again? Take my hand. Having his past erased seems like it would be a very enticing thing for Booker, since he's so full of regret from his horrific acts committed at Wounded Knee. However, Booker refuses the baptism and requests to get the hell out of whatever nightmare he's living. Elizabeth keeps dragging him along, convinced that Comstock is there, even after Booker clearly killed the man. Through another door, we're met with a very familiar scene. Through the many flashbacks of the game, we finally see who's behind the whole find the girl, wipe away the debt business. Bring us the girl, and wipe away the debt. Robert Lutes, a man who we see randomly popping up, providing sarcastic banter with an identical woman throughout the game. And then, Booker's forced to give Lutes a baby. This baby girl whom we've never even seen before. 
Elizabeth explains that she can see through multiple doors or universes that Booker will inevitably give Lutes the baby because he has to in order for them to find Comstock. So of course, Booker obliges and they enter another door, which brings us back to the very beginning of the game. Again, he questions Comstock's existence, but Elizabeth reminds him of the strange occurrences with Chen Lin and Lady Comstock. These were two instances in which these people were dead at one point, but somehow alive and conscious in a separate universe, tears that Elizabeth leads Booker through. No, he is alive in a million, million worlds. It's not over because the Prophet is dead. It will only be over when he never even lived in the first place. Hey. Hey, the deal's off, you hear me? The deal is off! Give her back! Give her back! Fine, are you mad? Give her back, you son of a bitch! It's ready! Go! No! No, no, no! No! Shut it down! Shut down the machine! No! Shut down the machine! Give me back my daughter! No! So there it is. Elizabeth led Booker to another scene in his past where it's revealed that Booker does know what happened to Elizabeth's, or Anna's, finger. A younger Comstock hired Robert Lutest to blackmail Booker into giving Comstock his daughter, Anna. Logically, that means that Comstock escaped with Anna through a tear created by the Lutesses, raised Booker's daughter as his own, and renamed her Elizabeth. So if you're following closely, you'll realize that the whole plot of Infinite is that Booker is actually sent to Columbia to reclaim his grown-up daughter that he sold in the past and he doesn't know this entire time. But that still doesn't explain why Comstock even wants Booker's daughter. What relationship is there between Booker and Comstock? Again, we're transported back to Booker's PI office. Almost 20 years. Until one day, a man came to you and offered you a chance at redemption. A chance for us to be together. Now we see that it was actually Lutes that offered Booker a chance at redemption, at getting back at his regret. Being a master of quantum physics, Lutes has the technology to bring Booker into this universe where he can reclaim his daughter. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. The dead is Booker's regret that he's lived with his entire life. Regret for selling away his daughter, Anna. So here we see the reality at the beginning of the game. The Lutesses dragged him into the boat, and he began to manufacture his own motives. Booker, are you sure this is what you want? I have to. It's the only way to undo what I've done to you. Booker DeWitt, are you ready to What is born? this? Why are we back here? This isn't the same place, Booker. Of course it is. I remember. Wait. You're not... You're not... Who are you? You chose to walk away, but in other oceans, you didn't. You took the baptism. And you were born again as a different man. Come, stop. It all has to end, to have never started. Not just in this world, but in all of ours. Smother him in the crib. Smother, 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 smother. smother. Before the choice is made. Before you are reborn. He's Zachary Comstock. He's Booker DeWitt. No. I'm both. Okay, so the many Elizabeths explain that this point in Booker's past, where he goes to the baptism right after a wounded knee, 
is the exact point where Father Comstock is either born or not born. Remember constants and variables? Booker's presence at the baptism is a constant, but the variable is the choice that is made. Take the baptism or don't take the baptism. It's simple. If he refuses it, he remains Booker DeWitt. The man that lives his life with regret for his actions at Wounded Knee? The man that ends up selling his baby daughter Anna? The man that carves her initials in his hand as penance? And lives 20 years of his life wallowing in all of his regret? Until another man, Lutes, comes along and offers him a chance at reuniting with his daughter Anna, and then becomes the man that lives the tale of Bioshock Infinite. Or, the other choice is that Booker takes the baptism and is washed of all of his sins, erased of his past, and is reborn as a new man, Zachary Comstock. Either way, the decision was made here, and the solution to the main conflict of the story? Drown Comstock at the source, smother him in the crib, which, in effect, drowns Booker. As a result, the several copies of Elizabeth from alternate universes start disappearing, and the one remains. Remember Comstock's last words? He knew this was the result. Now, it's very easy to get lost in the multiverse theory with this story. What if Booker was originally born as Hitler? What if he was this or that? No! The constant is Booker's presence at that baptism. The millions of worlds and alternate universes branched off at this one point in Booker's past. There is no denying this. And there are still so many details to iron out, so many loose ends still untied. Why does Comstock want Booker's baby, Anna? Was Anna born or conceived before Wounded Knee or after? Did the one Elizabeth remaining at the end disappear after the screen went black, or did she live? This obviously determines if she was born before or after the baptism, but we can't say for sure because we don't know. Given what we have, I can only think of one logical explanation. Comstock never even had a child, and when he somehow crossed paths with the Lutesses, he must have expressed his want for a child to fulfill the prophecy. Seed of the prophet, drown the mountains of men in flame, yada yada yada. And so they helped him travel to the alternate universe where Booker had Anna and stole him from his alternate self. More proof of this being the case is that Comstock is described as being sterile by the Lutesses, also Lady Comstock, due to too much interaction with the tares in multiple universes. And there's no really explanation for that but still doesn't explain why Comstock didn't or couldn't have a baby, because he didn't interact with the Terrors until he met the Lutesses, so it's not like he expressed the want for a child, then became sterile from the Terrors. Also we learn from the interactions with Lady Comstock that she believed Elizabeth came from some strange experiment, so this baby was definitely not born in a universe where Booker had taken the baptism and been born again as Comstock. Then of course, Comstock betrays the Lutesses because he knows how smart they are, mastering the ability to occupy multiple universes at once, which leads me to another loose end, the Lutesses. Is it the Lutesses or just Lutes? Throughout the game, the two appear and disappear quite too often. The reality is that in Booker's universe, Robert Lutes existed. He's the one that approached Booker in the first place. However, in Comstock's universe, Rosalind is the Lutess that existed. That Lutess was born as a woman instead of a man. She's the one who mastered quantum physics and allowed Columbia to float in the sky. And as a result from their combined genius and brain power, they figured out a way to coexist in Comstock's universe. Absolutely brilliant. And even when Comstock killed both of them off, they still managed to exist presumably from other alternate universes, and follow Booker along in his journey in Columbia. They aren't even tied into Booker's wounded knee, baptism, or non-baptism constant, and that gives them an excuse to disappear and reappear at any moment in time. The Lutesses are also the primary reason for driving the narrative, the whole story. Their goal is to use Booker to get revenge on Comstock by taking away Elizabeth from Comstock. It's almost like they're doing the reverse polar opposite thing that they did to Booker in the past. Instead of aiding Comstock in stealing Anna from Booker, this time they aid Booker in stealing Elizabeth, who is still Anna, 
from Comstock. Wow, I know that was a bit confusing, but if you let it sink in, it makes sense. With all this multiverse, alternate, parallel, universe, mumbo jumbo, there is still a concrete timeline of events. The Lutesses always point out that it isn't a question of what or who, but when. Since Comstock is older, his universe had to be before Booker's for him to go back, steal Anna, and raise her as Elizabeth in Columbia. The order goes something like this. Booker DeWitt lives his past as a hero at Wounded Knee. He enters the baptism, accepts it, and goes on to be Comstock. Comstock meets the Lutesses, they work for him, and offer him a way to get a child. They help Comstock steal Anna from Booker in an alternate universe, and Comstock raises her as his own, as Elizabeth. Then Comstock kills the Lutesses and prepares himself for the arrival of the false shepherd, Booker DeWitt. Then the Lutesses seek revenge on Comstock by contacting Booker DeWitt in his universe, using the washing of sins as a bargaining chip to get him to reclaim his daughter and exact revenge on Comstock. Then the story of Infinite unfolds and ends with Comstock never being born and DeWitt being drowned at the baptism after Wounded Knee. In the process though, Booker doesn't know he's actually rescuing his daughter and then he's actually the pawn being used by the Lutesses to seek revenge on Comstock, even though it's clear on the surface that he's doing a deed to wipe away a debt. At first I thought the Lutesses wiped Booker's mind clean or something, but then I realized Booker simply does not understand the whole opening tears and traveling to different universes idea at all. Comstock does, but they're different people in different universes. Booker is simply the man who gave away Anna, his baby, regretted it for 20 years, and accepted an offer at redemption. Somehow though, they did get it in his head that his journey to Columbia was just to pay off a gambling debt, when actually they were giving him a real opportunity to be with his daughter. And that brings me to another point. This whole journey with Booker actually ends up as him spending quality time with his daughter. It's really a sweet story when you look at it from that perspective. And it's too bad that it ends with her drowning him. But he does realize it at the end. And all he ever wanted to do was undo what he did to her. And he actually did. One last thing I don't quite understand but isn't 100% contingent on the ending is... How does Elizabeth have these powers in the first place? The only other person, or people, in the Bioshock narrative that have the ability to travel through the tears are the Lutesses, and they acquired the skill through sheer intellect and figuring it out. How did Elizabeth gain this skill? Is it from the act of traveling through to another universe as a baby? Was she born with it? Is it the fact that her pinky came in contact with the tear as a baby? Did that give her powers? Or is it just that she was raised in an alternate universe? Did the Lutesses give her the powers, perhaps? Nobody knows for sure. And one more theory that I didn't really catch on while I was playing the game, or right after I beat the ending, I actually found this on the internet. You know, a lot of people have been talking about this ending, of course, and that's why I'm making this video. But um, something that I didn't catch on was the infinite loop kind of theory, I guess. So, in the beginning, when you meet the Lutesses and they have the heads and tails, you see on the back of Robert Lutes, he's wearing that chalkboard, he's got like a bunch of heads and apparently you, like Booker flipped a coin that many times and he got heads that many times. And I thought that was just a good representation of, you know, the whole multiple universe thing and there's a universe where, you know, logically it could happen, you know, there could be heads every single time. I thought it was just a good representation of the multiverse theory, but... What it really is, is it points to the fact that Booker is kind of stuck in this infinite loop. And you can kind of relate that to the title of the game, Bioshock Infinite. But he's stuck in a loop. And further explanation of this is the song, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? So it's like he's stuck in a loop and they're singing, Will the Circle, of him being, you know, going to Columbia over and over and over and then failing, will it end? Will the circle be unbroken? That's what that song is about, which is just genius. It just gives you that incredible feeling, you know, this song has been used since the beginning of the game and it actually makes a difference in the end of the game. And it's referred to several, several times. So, you know, Booker being stuck in an infinite loop trying to stop this whole thing, that's what uh, that theory is, and I didn't pick up on that when I played through originally, or when I made this 
whole ending explanation originally, so. Alright guys, I provided the best explanation I could for this ending, but I know I'm not 100% correct, because these games are meant to be left open to interpretation. There are so many clues that relate to the ending throughout the game. It's maybe even worth a few videos just to go back and cut all of them together. So let me know if that's something you all would be interested in, because I'm interested in doing it. If you think I left something out, or are confused, or just have another question, feel free to leave it in the comments below, and I will try my best to get back to it as soon as possible. Hope you guys enjoyed, I will go ahead and take a breather, and I will talk to you later. Peace!